right, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Russ E. Hoover. Today we're looking at the end game of the Most High Elohim. And the question is, does your end game match with his? Stay tuned, we're gonna find out. So you should be seeing my screen now. We're talking about breaking free from strong delusion. This is part 12, knowing Yahuwah's end game. As always, we wanna remind you to visit Dr. Russ E. Hoover on our YouTube channel, once again, Dr. Russ E. Hoover. And make sure you do all those YouTube -y things. Make sure you subscribe, watch the videos, and hit that thumbs up, which is a like, and hit that bell of notification so you can be notified when we're dropping our new videos. And by all means, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. We get great joy out of getting a chance to hear from you and all your great comments and questions. We, we live for that. So make sure you uh, get a chance to do all those YouTube -y things. All right, so with that, let's get into this lesson. Now, we know from previous lessons that Satan has his methods of working in the world, and I'm committed during this particular series to keep this before you, because, you know, we're talking about strong delusions, and so he's the king of delusions and lies, so let's find out what he's all about. Well, we certainly know that Satan deceives the whole world, and he does not stand in truth, and when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Because why? He is the father of lies. Scripture tells us that Satan is the God of this world. And he is blinding the minds of those who are perishing. He transforms himself into an angel of light. He has ministers who preach and teach about Messiah. But they are actually ministers for his deception. Again, he has ministers who preach and teach about Messiah but they're actually ministers for his deception. And I mean, they knew, they're doing this with their eyes wide open. They get up in the morning, put their clothes on, knowing that they can ready to go and preach a deceptive message. I hate that. The devil is our adversary. He walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. So if you're not vigilant and sound-minded, he can very likely devour you. So you need to be aware of all these things. Keep your eyes open. Keep your, keep your heart open. Seek the Most High Elohim. Be, be diligent in your study so you can avoid these pitfalls of the devil. So, so far in this series, we've examined a few things. Mainstream Christianity, which we continue to talk about. The history of religion. The New World Order. The One World Religion. Replacement Theology. That was a big one. The Renaissance and Slave Trade. That was also a very powerful lesson. The pre-tribulation rapture. The rapture and going to heaven. Well, I had a lot of folks tell me, you, you opened my eyes on that one, brother, right? The rapture and going to heaven, among other topics. And so today we will learn Yahuwah's end game, right? We got to find out what his end game is. We must bring some clarity to the end time. There's a lot of misconception going on about what's to come. Many people are looking for things to happen that will not happen. It's going to cause a lot of disillusionment. The scripture talks about a great falling away. And so my job is to try to bring as much knowledge and understanding to this topic so we can help to avoid some of those people that's going to be falling away. So let's begin with Yasharel. Deuteronomy 6. You shall diligently keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, his testimonies, his statutes, which he has commanded you. You shall do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah, that it may be well with you, that you may go in and possess the good land of which Yahuwah swore to your fathers. This was his plan for Yasharel. They will be obedient children will be obedient to his plans so that he can cause them to prosper and dwell in that good land. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to walk in his ways and to fear him, Deuteronomy 8 and 6 tells us. Deuteronomy 13, you shall walk after Yahuwah, your Elohim, and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. Yahuwah desired obedience of Yasharel, but he got rebellion. Jeroboam's sin, 
th this was a tragic story because Solomon had failed the Most High Elohim during the latter parts of his, his reign. He married a lot of wives, a lot of strange wives from strange lands. They brought their you know, different gods into the camp. He, he put up different places for them to go and worship right inside of Israel. And so now they're going to their high places, worshiping their false gods in the camp of the Most High Elohim. You got to know that the Most High was not pleased with that. And so near the end of Solomon's life, he raised up Jeroboam. And he was full of wisdom. He was an industrious man. The hand of the Most High was on him. And the prophet came to Jeroboam and told him that if you would do right by the Most High Elohim, he will bless your kingdom. He's going to give you a kingdom and going to call to be blessed like David's kingdom. I mean, this is a, a, a heck of a promise. And so the prophet came and, and tore up his brand new garment, gave him 10 pieces of the garment. So you're going to have 10 out of the 12 tribes, Jeroboam. Just do what's right. Just do what's right, right? And so what did Jeroboam do? The sins of Jeroboam, the sin of worshiping in the wrong places. He created his own place to worship, said, we're not going to Jerusalem because he was afraid that if they went to Jerusalem, that they may go back to Rehoboam and, and he would lose his kingdom, even though the Most High had already made a promise to him that he was going to establish his kingdom and make it great. But he, out of his own fear, he decided to do all these things, set up a wrong place of worship, the sin of ordaining alternate priesthood. Instead of using Levites, he just let any anybody, any anybody off the street. You want to be a priest? Come on in, right? The sin of alternate feast days. Instead of the seventh month, he went to the eighth month. And the sin of idolatry. One of the first things he did was made a golden calf, put one up where they were that, and they put another one up in Samaria and said, we, these are your guys. We're going to stay up here and, and serve these guys. And he put Israel on a path of sinning that the Most High Elohim began to call Jeroboam, Jeroboam, who made Israel sin. That became his name, his nomenclature, Jeroboam, who made Israel sin. They never deviated from the, the track he put them on to sin against the Most High Elohim. So this is not good. So what Yahuwah received instead was what? Rebellion. Rebellion. Our father had prophesied that he would scatter his children across the four corners of the earth because of their rebellion. 1 Kings 14. For Yahuwah will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land which he gave to their fathers and will scatter them beyond the river because they have made their wooden images, provoking Yahuwah to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the what? The sin of Jeroboam, who sinned and who made Israel sin. That became his name. That's how they knew him by. First Israel sin, right? When they split the kingdom, Jeroboam, he called all the children of Israel to get scattered across the four corners of the earth. Then Judah, Yeshua's on the scene, He's before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate sees no wickedness in him at all. He's examined him and found him to be an upright and a righteous man. Even Pontius Pilate's wife came to him and said, listen, I've had dreams this night because of this righteous man. You need to wash your hands of this and leave this man alone. So from that time forward, he began to find a way to try to let him free. He kept going before the people saying, I don't see anything wrong with this man. He said, what, what are we going to do with him? And look what it says here. Matthew 27, verse 25. And all the people answered and said, let it be crucified. Let it be crucified. His blood be on us and on our children. They just want to see him dead so they can keep their place. You know, they want to keep, they want to remain the leaders of, of, the, of the children of Asherel. They want to stay in the religious leadership, even though they have really just gotten away from the Most High. They were, they were hard hearted. They were cold against the people. They were only doing what was good for themselves. And so as a result of their making this petition to let him be crucified and let his blood be on us and on our children, Pontius Pilate released Barabbas, a murderer unto them. And when he had scourged Yeshua, he delivered him to be crucified. So as a result of these things, 
sin of Jeroboam and the sin of, the, of Yehuda, these events trigger the curses of Deuteronomy 28 upon the Yahudim. This is a bad season. This is a bad time. Deuteronomy 4, 27. And Yahuwah will scatter you among the nations, and you will be left few in number among the nations where Yahuwah will drive you. And there you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek Yahuwah your Elohim, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 28. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even to the other. And there you shall serve other Elohim, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stones. There's another place he's making the same, the same declaration over them. And so as a result of this, the Portuguese became the first of the nations around the world that established themselves on the west coast of Africa for what purpose? The transatlantic slave trade. They began the horrific process of the transatlantic slave trade, and which was a fulfillment of Deuteronomy 28's prophecy. This led to the bondage of our ancestors, first by the Portuguese, then other nations of the world that followed. All of this because our forefathers would not obey the Most High Elohim. And just as you all stated in prophecy, we were scattered among all people on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 28, 45 and 46 tells us, Moreover, all these curses should come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you. And look at this now. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. So you read Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 15 through 68, and it's outlining all of these curses that are going to be on the people of the Most High Elohim. And then you have to ask yourself, what people meet this condition? Because he said, these curses shall be a sign, right? You ever you know, go to a march and you see people holding up signs? Those signs let you know exactly what they're there for. It lets you know exactly what they stand for. There's no question, right? There's no question. They got a sign up saying Black Lives Matter, then you know they're there for Black Lives Matter, right? There's no question about you know, whether they're there for the Ku Klux Klan. You know exactly what they're there for. The sign tells the whole story. And so Deuteronomy 28, those very important verses of Scripture were given so that those who want to know the truth can find out who the people of the book are, who the people of the Most High Elohim is, and then they can know and identify them from all the people on the face of the earth. That was so because we were the only group that did not know their ancestors. We didn't know where we came from. The only history they gave us was slavery. Mm -hmm. But the Most High used that as a sign to point us to look back mm -hmm. to where we really came from. You know, I'm so glad you shared that because I remember when we first crossed over, there was this one sister. She was, I wish I could remember her name, super radical, super radical. And, and, and she was like, she always talked about Deuteronomy 28. And she was saying, if, if they don't meet this condition, they're not the people of the book. And she was basically talking about Rev, Rev 2 9 and Rev 3 9. You know, she was one of the first people I ever heard that was really banging that drum about if they don't meet these conditions, then they don't, they're, they're not the people of the book because these are the signs. And so as I began to read more and more and more, you know, my, I began to shift my attitude in terms of who was a Rev 2-9 and Rev 3-9s. And as I stand here today, I am flat footed. And I'm saying that those folk over there in Israel are Rev 2-9 and Rev 3-9 because they do not meet the condition of the book. You know, they don't meet it. You know, they, they control media, they control so many different things. There's nothing in prophecy 
it talks about a people of the most high Elohim controlling the industry of the world. He's talking about his people going to be cursed and going to be the bottom and not the top. It's going to be borrowers and not lenders. It's going to be the tail and not the head. They don't meet that condition. So here's the key. In order to know who the people of Yahuwah are, you must follow the signs. That's all we're talking about right here and right now. You must follow the signs. Now, we're not going to go into the details on that today. But we will be covering Deuteronomy 28 in greater detail in another lesson. I want to get to Deuteronomy 28, and I want to get to Deuteronomy 30. Those are two critical chapters that we're going to be covering. And you definitely want to be tuned in for those lessons. The prophecy of the dry bones. Many of you listening to this message do not know who you are. You can only trace your heritage back so far. Many in the Americas to the transatlantic slave trade. That's all you know. I literally came out of my house one day and went walking up the street. And every time I saw a group of young people, you know, young brothers or sisters, I would go to them and tell them, how much do you know about your, your history? How far back can you go? Some will say, well, I, I can remember, you know, Martin Luther King. I can remember Malcolm X. That's about as far back as they can think of. I said, can you go back any further? Well, I know, I know we came here because of slavery. And, that, and they will say that. And I say, that's far they can go. And that's, that's the, the sum of the vast majority of people here in, in the United States that are people of color. You know, that's all they know. If Some of them have gone through, through high school, some have gone through college, some have gone through grad school, and have never learned anything about their history. That's all they know by design. They do not want you to know your heritage. It's been stolen from us, and they want to keep it that way because they've got people who have replaced us the replacement theology, and we've talked about that. But there's more that you must know about who you are. You are a descendant from the house of Yasharel and Yehuda, and your heritage has been stripped from you. Jeremiah 17, 4. And you, even yourself, shall let go of your heritage, which I gave you, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When I read these verses of scripture, and he says he is so angry that his rage is going to be burning forever, you know, it's almost like there's no coming back from that, right? His, his rage, his anger going to be burning forever. How do you come back from that? That's, that's a death sentence. That's, that's really a death sentence. And it was except we're talking about the Most High Elohim, who's able to raise even the dead. How I many hear what I'm saying? Without our heritage, we were as good as dead, having no knowledge of our great history, thus the prophecy of the dry bones. Ezekiel 37, the hand of Yahuwah came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of Yahuwah and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Can you say dead? They are dead, dry bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, oh, Yahuwah, Elohim, you know. And he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I'm going to pause here for a moment. Because only the Most High Elohim can do this. He knew he had given his children a death sentence. So because of the death sentence he had given them, he had to resurrect them from the dead. Thus, the prophecy of the dry bones. He drove us out to the four corners of the world until we were destroyed, until we literally ceased to exist. We were infiltrated into the cultures of the world, not knowing who we were, a lost people. But the most high, I mean, what's going on today is nothing short of a miracle. 
that you can find five people that know they're the people of the book, let alone the hundreds and the thousands that are waking up from the rattling and re realizing who they are in the Most High Elohim. He says, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah, a name that had not been spoken for centuries. The Rev 2 nines and the Rev 3 now, they don't call his name. They, they greet each other at Baruch Hashem, which means bless the name. But they won't say the name. They, they don't obey the verse of scripture that, that talks about his name, right? Honoring his name. They just don't even bother to say his name. But the Most High Elohim, he's in the process of resurrecting his people who know his name. I mean, hear what I'm saying? Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. The Most High is able. I say again, he is able. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones, are the whole house of Yasharel. Not just one tribe, not just the so-called Jews, but the whole house, all 12 tribes. These bones represent every one of our brothers and sisters. How you how many hear what I'm saying? They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves. Can you say resurrection? And bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahuwah. Nobody could do this but him. Nobody can completely destroy a people and then resurrect them from the dead like the Most High Elohim. I mean, hear what I'm saying. This is the prophecy of the dry bones, a major event in Yah's endgame. Can you say major event? This is a major event in Yah's endgame. But because of false teachings in mainstream Christianity, the full understanding of this prophecy has been lost, primarily because they are applying it to the people in the land of Israel today, a people who do not belong in the land. In fact, science is telling them you need to get out of the land because you're, you're burning up and you're getting skin cancer because this is not your land. I mean, hear what I'm saying. Religion is so messed up today that they claim to follow God while not understanding his mission and purpose in the earth. Imagine if you were a teacher in a classroom and you have responsibility and care for all of the children in that classroom. But if your child is in that classroom, you're going to make every effort to make sure your child gets what they need to succeed. Without a doubt, that's just what a parent's going to do. They're going to be looking over the class, but they're going to always be peeking out of the corner of their eye, making sure their child's getting what they need. If they look puzzled about something, they're going to make a walk over there and make sure they're getting what they need to win. I mean, hear what I'm saying. Zechariah 8. 
Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim in truth and righteousness. So with all the things that have happened over the century, the Most High Elohim is still saying, but these are my people, and I'm bringing them back. Right, my eye might be over everybody on the planet, but my eye is especially on my people, and I'm bringing my folks back. I mean, hear what I'm saying? Now, let's take that same situation. You are a teacher of your child's class, and you discover that a, that your child is being bullied by someone bigger, older, and stronger than they are. The bully is taking advantage of their superior position. How would you feel? Hmm? What would you do? Hmm? Especially if you are the ultimate authority with no one to answer to. Right? What are you going to do about this situation? Can you say the wrath of God? Huh? Can you say the wrath of God? Isaiah 49. But Zion said, Yahuwah has forgotten me. And my Adon has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Sure, they may forget, <laughs> yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your sons shall make haste. And look what he says here. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste shall go away from you. Lift up your eyes, look round and see. All these gather together and come to you. As I live, say Yahuwah, you shall surely clothe yourself with them all as an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants. And those who swallowed you up will be far away. The children you will have and if you have lost others, will say it again in your ears, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. Then you will say in your heart, who has begotten these for me? Since I've lost my children and I'm desolate, a captive and wandering to and fro. And who has brought these up? There I was, left alone, but these, where were they? Now, unless you understand Deuteronomy 28, you don't understand the question that they're asking here in Isaiah 49. Because Isaiah 49 is, is fulfilling on the condition of Deuteronomy 28, where it said, you're going to be looking for your children with longing because they're not going to be there. Why? Because your sons and daughters shall be sold as male and female slaves, taken away from you, right? The Portuguese were the first to do this. In, I want to say, 1472, they took Hebrew children away from the Hebrews and sold them off into slavery. So our history has been where our children have been taken away from us. And so right here, the Most High is saying that they're going to be restored. Let me read this again so now you can get it in the full context. The children you will have after you have lost the others will say again in your ears, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. In other words, there's so many kids that you don't have enough space for them all. Then you will say in your heart, who has begotten these for me? Since I have lost my children and am desolate, a captive and wandering to and fro. And who has brought these up? There I was, left alone, but these, where were they? They're asking this question. How in the world can that person who was desolate now have so many children? Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the people. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Look at this now. Kings shall be your foster fathers, 
and their queens, your nursing mothers. Now, th these positions they're talking about, foster parents, these are menial tasks. But the Most High is saying the kings of the nations and the queens of the nations are going to be serving you in menial tasks now. In other words, the script is being flipped. I mean, hear what I'm saying? Look at what it says here now. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. All these nations who have been abusing us, the Most High is saying a day is coming where they shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am Yahuwah, for they shall not be ashamed to wait on me. I hope you're waiting on him, right? Right? We may endure for the night, but joy, but joy is coming in the morning. How many hear what I'm saying? Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of the righteous be delivered? But thus says Yahuwah, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. Look what he says here now. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. This is what the Most High is saying to Yashorel. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood and with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I, Yahuwah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaakov. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He wants all flesh to recognize these are my people y'all been messing with, and it's time for me to stand up. I'm standing up on their behalf. I'm going to hear what I'm saying. Yasharel regathered. Jeremiah 16. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, that it shall no more be said, Yahuwah lives who brought up the children of Yasharel from the land of Egypt. I got one question. Is anybody talking about a great exodus other than the one from Egypt? It hasn't happened yet. That event in 1948 does not have us talking about an event so great that we're not talking about the exodus from Egypt. When we talk about the children of Israel, we still talk about the exit of Egypt, and we're still honoring them with Passover. But Jeremiah is prophesying of an exodus that's going to come. It's going to be so great that it's going to cause us to forget about the exodus from Egypt. Let's read this again. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, that it shall no more be said, Yahuwah lives, who brought up the children of Yashorel from the land of Egypt. But Yahuwah lives, who brought up the children of Yashorel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. That's going to be, it, there's a great exodus coming. And every nation on the planet is going to feel it. Not just Egypt, every nation. Every nation. You got something? This exodus, now remember, when they left Egypt, they spoiled yes, they the did. Egyptians. Yes, they did. And the Egyptian gave them all kinds of stuff. That's right. And when they left out, they went, they left out rich. Yes, they did. And this exodus is supposed to be so great. That's right. That it's gonna make us forget. That. Forget about the Egyptian exodus. That's something. You know, you kind of pick you know, pick down something there. That wasn't part of my message, but that's real, right? That's real. There's gonna be an exodus greater than that exodus. They came. They they were they were poor one one morning, right? They went to, they went to bed poor, and they woke up rich in one day. Okay. The Most High was able to change their circumstance. They spoiled the Egyptians. Whatever you want, just take it. Just go. Take whatever you want. Just go. Right? Hear what I'm saying? Verse 15. But Yahuwah lives, who brought up the children of Yashorel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back into their land, which I gave to their fathers. That day has not come yet. It has not happened yet, but it's coming. He said, behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, 
That's all you need to know. It's coming. We're talking about the end game of the Most High Elohim. We're talking about his end game. You may not hear this talked about in churches, but it doesn't change the fact that the book talks about it. This is his end game. Yahuwah is promising to restore us to the land. Jeremiah 30. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, as it is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve Yahuwah, their Elohim, and David, their king. Who is David, their king? That's when Yeshua himself shows up to rule over them. Ezekiel talked about that. There should no more be two kingdoms, but one kingdom. The two sticks could become one in his hand. And the, and the seed of David, right? He's going to be the king over them, whom I will raise up for them. Therefore, do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, stop, look, and listen. I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity, wherever that might be, in the Americas, right? Doesn't matter, right? In, uh, in Europe, it doesn't matter. Look at this now. I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of your captivity, Jacob shall return, have rest, and be quiet. And no one shall make him afraid. Oh, I, not, you can't appreciate this until you read Deuteronomy 28. You know, in Deuteronomy 28, what did it say? Oh, that it was morning, because he's so fearful. And then when morning comes, oh, that it was evening. Because he was so fearful. There was no time of day that he had peace and quiet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can mm. we make it relevant today? Go ahead. We can't have our black men out, especially at night, mm -mm. and get stopped. We can't have them out during the day. And I mean, just out jogging and the man gets killed. Right. You know, minding his own business. These are the things that bring fear to especially mothers. That's right. Don't you know, know their kids gonna be coming home at night. Right? right? This, this, this is so true. You know, but he said a day is coming. Right? Let's read this again. I will save you from afar, and you receive from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be quiet, and no one. I'm going to say it again, and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. So I make a full end of all nations where I've scattered you. I'll, I'll end them, is what he's saying. Yet I will not make a complete end of you. You may have made me angry, right? But I'm not making a complete end of you. But I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. So we've gone through this season of Jacob's trouble. We've gone through the season of being punished by the Most High Elohim, which is like any parent, that anger eventually cools down. You know, you may have been angry, you may have put put him in that room, you may have got those switches in that hot wheel track and laid and, and laid the land, you know, laid laid down the law, right? You know, they they knew you mama was mad. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have went in that store and stole that. I went, I shouldn't have done that, and right, you got that whooping, but eventually mama gonna come in there and shake on you. And make sure everything is all right. Right? You're hungry, you need something. Y'all know a mother's love. You know, it, it's un, it's unending. She she may be angry for a moment, but it's not gonna do it forever. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hollowed in them in the sight of many nations. What is he saying here? This day is gonna come back when he's gonna bring them back. See, he had a season where he had to scatter us because for us to be living the way we're living, talking about our ancestors now, and saying his name was bringing shame to his name. And so he had to take us through this season of punishment that once we come back, we're gonna walk up rightly before him 
therefore not bringing any shame to his name. This is what he's saying here now. So when I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am what? Hollowed in them in the sight of many nations, meaning that through us he's getting glory. Then they shall know that I am Yahuwah their Elohim, who sent them into captivity among the nations, but what? But also brought them back to their land and left none of them, left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them anymore. For I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Yasharel, says Yahuwah Elohim. And the reason why I'm reading all these scriptures because he talks over and over and over again about bringing his children back. He says, I scattered them and I'm bringing them back. I scattered them and I'm bringing them back over and over and over again. This is his end game. His end game is not focused on, if you, if you go on YouTube today and you, and you Google rapture, it, it'll come up a zillion times. Because the whole church world is on rapture watch. You know, they know that things are getting crazy in this world. And all they're thinking about is, the, is God going to take us out of here. Any day now, any day now, he's taking us out of here. And he's not even thinking about y'all. If y'all don't repent and get right, y'all the last thing on his mind right now. His end game does not involve rapturing the church. You need to wake up. The nation of the world who became wealthy off the backs of Yahuwah's people will come and know the Most High Elohim cares for his own. All right? Ezekiel 28. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they scattered and am hollowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they which dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards, Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgment on all those around them who despise them. What? They will dwell securely when? When I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am Yahuwah, the Elohim. Right? In other words, he's saying, I'm going to show up. You had a bully in the house? You had a bully in the camp. There was a bully at this school messing with my son. You say, what? Okay. All right. I got something for him. There's not, there's not a principal. There's not a superintendent. Right? There's not a judge. There's not a general. Huh? There, there's not a person on the planet that can stop me from messing with those who mess with mine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not a person on the planet. They can stop him from messing with those who mess with his. Ezekiel 37. Then say to them, thus said Adonai Yahuwah, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places, which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. You know, every every parent knows what it means to have their children get out of order, right? They get out of order, but when they when they straighten up and they start doing what's right, you long to shower on them. You long to bless them. You want to take them to the store and get them whatever they want when they're doing the things right. And that's all that the Most High is looking for right now. This season of dry bones is all about us getting into the right place where the Most High can delight in blessing us, the way that he delighted in cursing us when our fathers fell. I mean, hear what I'm saying. Got to get this. The Gentiles engrafted. We know now the Most High's mission 
His primary focus right now is the restoration of Yasharel, of the regathering them, the, the dry bones are waking up, they're recognizing who they are, and, and they're, they're positioning themselves to be restored back to where the Most High Elohim wants us. But there's another group of people that the Most High is concerned about, and it's not the church. It is not the church. Isaiah 49, and now Yahuwah says, who formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of Yahuwah, and my Elohim shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel? All of this conversation is about restoration of the house of Yashorel. But look what he says here now. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So there's a group of people that are not Hebrew that the Most High is still looking for. This has been part of his plan from the, from the word go, that he wanted to have a people from the nations. How many hear what I'm saying? Ephesians 2. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. To say strangers is just another way of saying Gentile. But fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of Elohim. The household of Elohim represents Yasharel. The 12 tribes is his household. So he's saying that these strangers now and these foreigners are no longer strangers, but now you're going to be made part of the household of Elohim have been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahushua HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together rose into a holy temple into Yahuwah in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of Elohim in the spirit. So I know there's some of my brothers who, who are so angry and I get it. I know what we have dealt with for these 400 plus years. I get it. When you see those people that don't look like you, you get angry, right? And, and you just want all of them to just die right on the spot. But all of them are not the same. The Most High has a people. He has a people among the Gentiles. He's always said it, right? If the stranger among you wants to come in and share, be a partaker of that Passover, all they got to do is circumcise. And today, what does that mean? To circumcise your heart. And if you have people that don't look like you, that still say they want a fellowship with you, they want to honor you, they recognize that you're the people of the book, then you, you we need to make space for them. Right? Why am I going to, I got a person that want to serve the most high, I'm going to tell them to their face, he has no place for you. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that person. I'd be scared to go to bed that night that he might not wake me up in the morning. Do we really know that he's cast that judgment on all the people when you read scriptures like this that says he's he gonna be a light to the Gentile? You know, in these verses of scriptures, when he talk about a stranger, he gave that to Moses. There were no strangers that were he, he, Hebrew in the time of Moses. So if he had space for the stranger, and he gave that promise to Moses that they will be converted and they will be just like one born in the camp. How are we going to change that, that, that scripture? He said that to Moses. He was not talking about Hebrews that have been scattered and inbred with other nations. because That hadn't happened yet. All the Hebrews that existed were there with Moses. There were no other Hebrews in northern nations at that time. Now he's Hebrew Israelites, and he put it in the Torah to give space for the stranger that may want to come in and join forces with you. And even the mixed multitude came out of Egypt, and they were present when he gave the Torah. So how are we going to have this attitude that us for no more? That's not the most high. He's not about that. He has a place for these people. There are Gentiles from the nations who acknowledge Yashorel who are scattered among them. 
They are wild olive branches that will be grafted into Yasharel and enjoy the fruit of the kingdom. Don't get it twisted. They will be there. And the Most High is going to welcome them because they honored you. They honored you. And so the Most High has a place for them. Now, what about mainstream Christianity? Because they are deceived. Deceived and don't even know it. Mainstream Christianity and other false religions embrace false doctrines. The rapture doctrine, they all screwed up on that. Their timeline for the end time events, it, it makes no sense. They want to they want to talk about the present age is the church age. It is not the church age. And they talk about the rapture of the church happening before the tribulation. It's not going to happen. We've talked about that. Look at my playlist. But the church is still embracing this. They're still getting it wrong. They believe in many false doctrines, including replacement theology, believing that they're more important to the Most High Elohim than Yasharel themselves. You are, you are mistaken. They still believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. They believe in that mansion in heaven, which we talked about last week. Not going to happen. They believe Israel has been restored as a nation in 1948. Not so, right? Because many in the world religions embrace this group as restored Israel. They fail to see the hand of Yahuwah as he restores the lost 12 tribes who have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. The world disregards for Yah's people will make them the enemies of Yah. Make no mistake. You, you've seen this language that he's talked about today, right? Those people that don't want to honor the, 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 the dry bones that are waking up, you know, the rattling of these dry bones and the fact that they're acknowledging who they are. And there's a lot of people in media in different places that, that, that talk against this, this rattling of the dry bones. You know, they, they want to talk against it, but they're making themselves the enemy of the most high. I, I saw a clip of a, of a pastor that was talking about, you know, these so-called Hebrew people, you know, want to want to claim to be the Hebrew. That is a black pastor talking about Hebrew Israelites. And the fact that, you know, this is what he said. They're literally going into these Old Testament books, these Old Testament prophets, prophets that we don't even read. I didn't even know those books was even in the Bible. This is a quote now. He said about the only book in the Old Testament we go to is Malachi when we want to talk about raising tithes. But those other prophets, we don't even deal with them. And they quoting from these prophets talking about they're the people of the book. I could not believe this man got in front of a camera and literally said that. But he's making himself the enemy of the Most High Elohim. But see, the word says, study yes. to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. He was far from that. He was far from so all these people that's taking this position against the Most High Elohim and his children who are, who are coming to themselves in these strange lands, recognizing who they are as the people of the book. Now, the world is disregarding them, and their disregard for Yah's people will make them the enemy of Yah. Make no mistake about it. So the nations judged. Isaiah 14. For Yahuwah will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and sit of them in their own land. Even with all the stuff they've done against Moses and Elohim, they're saying Yahuwah will still have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and sit of them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Strangers, Gentiles, will recognize who they are and will cling to them, the scriptures say. Then people will take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel will possess them for servants. Right? These, these Some of these people that, that were holding us captive, it says here, and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of Yahuwah. Look at this now, so there's no confusion. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. Do I need a, a, a dictionary or concordance for any of this? Or is that pretty plain? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read again just for those in the back that didn't hear. 
Then people will take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of Yahuwah. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. Don't get it twisted. Jeremiah 30. Why do you cry about your breach? Your pain is incurable because your many crookednesses, because your sins have increased. I have done this to you. He's still being a parent, scolding his children, right? However, all those who devour you shall be devoured. All those who devour you shall be devoured. All those, I'm sorry, I got stuck there. All those who devour you shall be devoured. And all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And those who exploit you shall be exploited. And all who prey upon you, I shall make a prey. And all who prey upon you, I shall make a prey. Did you get that? All who prey upon you, you know, they want to use you. Last hired, first fired, not making the money that everybody else is making, charge you more money for your loan than they charge for everybody else. You get a mortgage, you paying two and three percent higher than everybody else. And all those who prey upon you, I shall make a prey. For I restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, declares Yahuwah. For they have called you an outcast, saying, This is the own. No one is seeking her, right? We may well take advantage of her. They have no covering, right? That's what they're saying. Thus said Yahuwah. See, I turn back the captivity of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon his own mound and the palace stand on his right places. For look, in those days, Joel 3 tells us, and at that time, when I turn back the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem, then I shall gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I shall enter into judgment with them there. Why? For my people, my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land, and they have cast lots for my people, and I've given a young man for a whore, and sold a girl for wine and drank it. This is what the Most High said. I'm not happy with how y'all treated my kids. For you have taken my silver and my gold and brought my treasure into your temples. And the people of Yehuda and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the sons of Yahweh to remove them far from their borders. See, I am stirring them up out of the place to which you have sold them. And I shall return on your own head what you have done and shall sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the people of Yehuda, And they shall sell them to the Shebites. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And to a nation afar off. Why? For Yahuwah has spoken. I don't know if you guys heard this, but it's a two thing going on there. Mm -hmm. The ones that had us in slavery and the ones that sold us in slavery, they both got a judgment. Coming. That's right. That's right. Because see, we came over because they sold us to them. That's right. Then when we get here, they put us in, oh man. You, the Most High's memory is not short. And his arm is not short. Huh? When he make up his mind, that he's going to get vengeance. There is not a person that can say, don't do that. Who's going to tell him no? Who's going to tell him no? Yeah, who is in game? Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of Yahuwah is coming. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken. The houses rifled. And the women ravished. Half the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I first began to read this Zechariah 14, 
I used to be confused by this. Because it said, I'm going to gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. But I realized that the land is not inhabited by the true Hebrew. Now, there may be some. There are some that have gone in from some of the nations, and they've been kind of kicking some of them out, too. And so the people that are possessing the land right now are not the true people of the book. And so as I read this, he talks about the city being taken, the houses rifled, and the women uh, being ravished. These are not the Hebrew people. These are Rev 2 nines and Rev 3 nines that's going to be going through this. Half the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people, I believe there's going to be a measure of people in that city that are true Hebrew that the Most High is going to preserve. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then Yahuwah will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half it toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley. For the mountain valley shall reach to Azel. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus, Yahuwah, my Elohim, will come. And look at this now. And all the saints with you. Right? So the saints were not in Jerusalem. Because when this stuff is going on in Jerusalem, the saints had not showed up there yet. So this is what I believe is going on. I want you guys to be able to put these things together. Zechariah is talking about a day when Yeshua is coming back and there's war going on in Jerusalem. The nations are attacking Jerusalem and Yahuwah is getting ready to come to deliver them. Thus Yahuwah my Elohim will come and when he comes, he's bringing all the saints with him. So what's going on here? 1 Thessalonians 4. For this we say to you, by the word of the Adon, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming, unto the coming of the Adon, will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Adon himself will descend from heaven. He's coming down from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of Elohim. And the dead in Mashiach will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adam in the air. So we're meeting him in the air and he's going somewhere. Where is he going? He's going to Jerusalem because Zechariah 14 tells us Yahuwah shows up and all the saints with him. All the saints with him. He didn't say just the living saints. He said all the saints. So in order for that to happen, then this casting away had to have occurred. So then he says, and the dead in Mashiach will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adon in the air and thus we shall always be with him now. So from this point forward, we're always going to be with him. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So Zechariah 14. And it shall come to pass that everyone who was left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts. So what happened? He came to fight against those nations. He brought all the saints with him. He won the battle, and then he established his kingship on the earth. And now we're in the millennial reign of Mashiach, and what is he requiring? Verse 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations, those that didn't get killed, right, which came against Jerusalem, shall go up from year to year 
to worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which Yahuwah strikes the nation who does not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day, holiness to Yahuwah shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in Yahuwah's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every part of Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to Yahuwah of hosts. This is going to be the millennial reign of Mashiach where the lion will be able to lay down with the lamb. We're going to have a thousand years of peace on the earth. So make no mistake, destruction is coming to the enemies of Yahuwah, to those who abuse his people. Destruction is coming. When he shows up, they're going to be saying, to the mountains, fall on us. Hide us from him who's coming. The rage in his face is going to be so bad. I mean, they're going to have heart attacks when he gets ready to come to avenge his people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what is required of Israel? What is he requiring of Yashrael at this time? By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Romans 13. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commands, you should not commit adultery, you should not murder, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness, you should not covet. And if there is, is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying. Namely, you should love your neighbor as yourself. 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Elohim, and everyone who loves is born of Elohim and knows Elohim. He who does not love does not know Elohim. Why? For Elohim is love. Romans 12, as we get ready to wrap this thing up. If it is possible, as much as depend on you, live peaceably with all men, not standing on the street corners yelling at people, right? But live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Yahuwah. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. That is our assignment. To walk in love, to show acts of kindness, and to trust the Most High Elohim, that when the day of vengeance comes, he's going to hold up his part. And I think we're pretty clear today that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. With the time we have left, our job is to pull as many as we can out of the fire. I don't care what they look like. If they're willing to walk this walk, then you should be willing to walk with them. While bringing the knowledge to the lost tribes of Yashorel that they are Hebrew Israelites, the true people of the Most High Elohim. This is our primary assignment. While we bring this knowledge to the lost tribes, we still got to walk arm in arm with those who are willing to walk with us because there will be those from the Gentiles that will be grafted in. Please, please get that straight. All right. So who are we talking about today? The Elohim of Yasharel. Why? Because he is the one true Elohim. So the question is, does your end game match his end game? We have to determine now. You have to look at where you are looking in scripture and had an expectation of what you thought was gonna happen in this world. And you must ask yourself, 
does my end game match his end game? You know, am I on the same page with the Most High Elohim or not? Because if you're not, you need to reread your scriptures. You need to take another look at this video and make certain that you line up with what was important to him. Because if what's important to you is not important to him, then you you walking the wrong way. You're going to end up hearing him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, he curse it. Right? And you don't want to hear those words. So you must line up your end game with the Most High Elohim. I mean, hear what I'm saying. All right. So, oh man, it's a big old X in this. Why? Because there's been an update. <laughs> right? We have updated our, our uh, YouTube channel. Now you've got the most popular videos that you can see. The playlists are easy to find now. So you can go to our, our YouTube channel and you can find this playlist. The first playlist you come up to will be the one that we're building right now, right? Being free from strong delusions. You can also see the what we've got so far on the book of Exodus, the book of Genesis, and also understanding the Sabbath and the feast day. They're all there. So. Uh, we want to make sure you get a chance to visit our YouTube channel at Dr. Russ E. Hoover. And make sure you do all those youtube -y things, right? Make sure you subscribe, right? You watch those videos and give them a thumbs up. Hit that bell of notification so that you can be notified, right, when we're dropping those new videos. And by all means, leave your comments, questions, so that we get a chance to respond to those as well. So, again, we are excited to be sharing this lesson with you. And we trust that you have been learning from these various lessons that we've given you uh, down through the weeks. We're going to continue on this path to make sure that you're walking in truth and you're being free from the strong delusions. And again, get a chance to watch the video uh, that we're going to be featuring this week. Uh, are these really the true children of Israel? Because you need to know and recognize that. So we're going to be featuring that video um, this week. So make sure you get a chance to take a look at that. That's the video that's coming up on uh, at the end of this message. All right. So I'm going to remind all of you now that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I've read in the book, and I want you to know something. We win, and the devil loses. We win the battle, and Satan loses the war. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and bless you as we send you on your way. Hallelujah. Yahweh Yahweh May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine on you and show you his favor. And may Yahweh lift his face towards you and do what? Give you shalom, peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking. All right, saints. Till next time, it's Dr. Russell E. Hoover. We are signing off, wishing everybody Shabbat Tov. Have a blessed, blessed week.